Good evening. Tonight we're going to see a show that's filled with comedy invention. Now, when we think of inventors, we generally think of Thomas Edison or Marconi. But for the instantaneous creation of comedy, there's no inventor quite like Jonathan Winters. Edison gave us the phonograph and the light bulb, but Jonathan has given us Elwood Stubbins and Maud Frickett. Marconi invented the wireless, but Jonathan invented Hiram Sweetie and Theodore Much. And he keeps on inventing these bizarre characters that for all their quirky personalities are somehow very real and familiar. So let's set this mad scientist of comedy to work and see just what he's inventing tonight. Welcome to the wacky world of Jonathan Winters. Appearing with Jonathan tonight are Bert Reynolds, Dan Rowan, and Mary Gregory. There's certainly no shortage of talk shows on television. There's Johnny and Merv and Dick Cavett, and they all have their own unique style, or each of them very good in their own way. But my own favorite is a little low-budget show that comes out of Merleyville, Ohio. It doesn't dazzle me with a big band and production numbers. I can't say that it's uh, intellectually stimulating. But it does have one asset the other talk shows cannot claim. And here it is, Elwood Suggins. I want to make a, a call to a shut-in now. If you, we always, we always make a call to a shut-in. Somebody that's uh, inside. Hello, Bertha. Is, uh, have you got anybody on there for me? Who's this? Mrs. Wayne Dobler. Hi, Mrs. Dobler. This is Elwood P. Suggins here, uh, Station WMUR, Merleville. How are you? Huh? Hello. Hello. Oh, is this her son? What happened to her? Jumped out of the window. <laughs> oh, well, they'll do that every once in a while. Uh, try, to get, uh, try to get the phone down to her on the ground. <laughs> Hi, are you on the ground, Mrs.? Oh, how are you? Yeah, what made you want to jump out? Just kidding around. <laughs> uh, we've, got a, we've got a telephone book here for you. Yes, uh, well, it's as good as probably don't plead. What? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Boy, them kind of words are for out back of the barn. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is all we've got is just a telephone book. Yeah, and you can make new friends that way. Okay. That was our regular shut-in call. We'll make another one. Uh, uh, incidentally, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bonlinger, Howard Bonlinger, puts these forks out. These are real good for hay uh, around the barn or any place like that, or, uh, or just like this. Uh, <laughs> some guy comes in, you don't like what he's selling, go at him. <laughs> uh, these are brooms. Uh, this, uh, my stepbrother makes these, and uh, he's down in the basement and makes these and does a real good job with them. These are a hundred for a dollar. <laughs> and now it's... Uh, with a great deal of pleasure, uh, we've got a, a star. He, his plane was forced down uh, 100 miles from here. Uh, Mr. Burt Reynolds, uh, let's welcome him. Come on in, Mr. Reynolds. Yeah. Hi, Mr. Reynolds. Uh, boy, I tell you, what brings you to, to town, to Merleyville? I know your plane was forced down there in uh, Stumler's Field. Uh, that was, uh, boy, a four-engine jet forced down that field. It must have tore the field up real good. Yeah, it did. That was a kind of a quick landing and a quick exit. Uh, we're, we want to give you this. Uh, oh, really? This, uh... They don't give me anything on the Carson show. Well, I'll be darned. We want to give you something here. And uh, just, uh... That's really something. Isn't that very real good? We don't have no string yeah. for it or uh, no reel. Yeah. But, uh... Maybe on the Carson show oh, they'll I give can you use that. it. I can, yeah, I'll put the girl in the plastic bag and Ooh, hit her. Boy. <laughs> Oh, here. Uh, you, oh, okay, keep Nothing that with you. Uh, listen, uh, tell me about your picture, White Lightning. Is this White Lightning, yeah. Is this yeah, about booze? Well, it's about moonshine. Yeah, it is. 
I guess you know down here in the country that... Uh... Oh, there's a lot a lot made out by our place. Oh, really? Oh, thousands of gallons of it. I never touch it myself. I don't smoke or drink. I'm church people. Uh -huh. But uh, I've been known to shoot a pigeon there once in a while. <laughs> I shot one of them the other day, didn't have nothing to do, and knocked him off the weather vane. Uh, tell me, tell me about White Lightning. What was, uh, what was the most... Uh, fri See, our pictures are seen here on a sheet in the middle of the street. Uh. Uh, we don't, uh, the movie house that we had was uh, torn down by some XGIs. Yeah. And uh, they wanted to put up a housing project, so they got rid of it. Uh, so we see your, whatever pictures you have, we see them right on a sheet in the middle of the street. Well, this picture will uh, go over good on the sheet. Well, listen, uh, I want to make a call to a shut-in. There's a person that wants to talk to you. Of course. I've got her name here. Uh, Ida, Ida May Temler. Ida May Timmer. How old is she? Uh, she's a woman, 99 years old, and she's got the mind of a child. Uh, she, uh... So, talk to her like you would a kid. I will. Wait a minute, I'll get her. Hello, Bertha, have you got Mrs. Town? Oh, real good. Hi, hi. See, I do this to her Hi. Listen now, uh, straighten up. I know you're 99 years old, but listen. Oh, uh, we've got Mr. Burt Reynolds. Now, ask him an, an adult question. Don't say, I can't say it. Come on. Come on. Be right now. This is Mr. Reynolds. We don't get a star like this every day. Ask him about his picture. Ask him about his, uh, his life outside the picture. Hmm. There. She, she, she's what's got a high What's her first name? Uh, Ida May. Ida May. Hello, Ida May. She talk like a child? No, she's not talking like a child. She's going, nee, no, 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 no. Is she Ida, doing that? Ida, Ida May. Hello, Ida May. How are you? Would you like to ask me a question? No, I, I don't do that. <laughs> what she asked you? Well, I, I don't know. What did she ask you? Well, <laughs> did she ask you? Give me that. <laughs> what did you ask him? <laughs> you should never have asked him that. <laughs> Listen, you old beast. <laughs> don't you ever call up here and say that to a star or to me or anybody. I don't care what your state <laughs> for long life is. Wrong. <laughs> She's been married 26 <laughs> times. Three she asks questions like that. Now, listen. I want to give you a cigar that was rolled by one of the boys here uh, down at uh, Carnaber uh, Barn. That's, yeah. that's a real, I know you smoke cigars. That's a real good one. And yeah. smoke it with a paper on it's better. <laughs> Yeah, take the paper off, boy, it's stout. Oh, yeah. Listen, uh, before I leave, there's yeah. one thing I would like sure. to have. Sure. What would you like to I'd have? I'd like to have Ida May's phone number. <laughs> just, for, just, just to talk to her on the phone, you know. Oh, sure. Yeah, but she's, I tell you now, she's, uh, she's, she's a big... She's gangbusters on the phone. She's gangbusters at home, too. <laughs> really? She's a big woman. She's a big woman, boy. She's over, well over 200 pounds. Oh, really? How tall? Sure, she held up the, the, the local carnival tent for uh, <laughs> last time. A big woman. How tall is she? Well, don't make no difference. Uh, That's to me. Well, she's about, uh, she's 5'11". 5'11", 200 pounds. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, I can work that in. Okay. Now listen. Here, here. This, uh, this is a little duck call put yes, out by is. the, uh, uh, Framers, Framers Duck. That's our sporting goods store. Framers down. Duck. Boy, this if you get that nice. messed up, you're really in trouble. That's right. <laughs> but these are good. You can call a lot of things with these. If you, huh? get, if you get tired of calling ducks, you can call your cow. I don't want to blow on it where you blow on it. Oh. Where'd you blow on it? I ain't got nothing. Okay. <laughs> there. Oh, nothing happened. Try the other end. Oh. There, try that. Oh, real good. Oh, yeah, we used to do this in high school. Real good. That's real good. You do that on the bus going home, you'll get off the bus a hundred times before you get home. <laughs> Give Jonathan Winters any object, a coat hanger, a ball of string, and he'll turn it into a source of instant comedy. Let's join Jonathan in his attic. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. Want to bring your dog in, lady? <laughs> Here, bring him in. Boy, that's the biggest dog I've ever seen. <laughs> Our 
doctor? <laughs> you in? Ouch! Uh, we were, hello, this is Rick Randell, highlights from the world of sports. Uh, I uh, asked the engineering department to give me a hand mic without, I don't think we really need this. Uh, but uh, since we're here on the field, then we'll just, uh, I'll use this as a desk. Okay, start your engines. Now, when they come by, Fred, watch this. You gotta be fast, but you can get the, if you're real fast, you can get the ornaments on the cars. <laughs> See that? <laughs> uh, just keep sailing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Watch up there on the mast now. That's all right. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about it. No, no, I did it myself. <laughs> I want to say this, if this don't work this time, I'm going to Bethesda. Hi, I'm Brainerd Suplich, and uh, I'm here as your tool man. Yeah, uh, I use all these tools. I use them on the people first to make sure I'm going to get paid. Freeze, Jonathan. Now, here's the situation we're going to put you in. Take that toolbox. Make believe you're a plumber making a house call at the home of Dan Rowan. Yeah, well, I'll be over on the weekend, but I don't want to play any mixed doubles. I don't know. Who? Yeah, it must be that plumber. Yeah, come on in. And I'll I'll be uh I'll probably be around three o'clock. Yeah, let me get back to you. I got a problem here. Hi, right, you the plumber? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm uh, Willis Mumford with a Mumford uh Mumford yeah. plumbing, please. Yeah, well, listen, I've got a problem over here. I put some of these tools right down here on the carpet. No, I'd rather you didn't put it on the carpet. That's well, gonna put them in that chair there. <laughs> you got a license? Wait a minute. Holy... <laughs> I know who you are. You're, uh, you're Mr., uh, Mr. Rowan. Yeah, and Mr. I know who you are. You're Mumford, the plumber who just broke a piece of tile on my floor. Now pick up the box of tools and bring it over here to the wall. I want to show you... <laughs> I want to show you what's wrong with the wall. I, I, it, I don't know if it's inside the wall or whether it's upstairs, but we've had a leak for two weeks. I've seen you on life in. I really enjoyed you. <laughs> what's the other man's name? What's his name? You want to pick up your tools? Put them down easily, right there. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, put your ear up against that wall. Boy, that's a crummy print. <laughs> I didn't bring you in here to appraise my art pictures. Put your ear up against the wall. I and want you... what is that trash over there? <laughs> Boy, you guys, you know, you get you a little money. Now, I'm just going to level it. It's none of my business, but you get you a couple of bucks ahead, and you buy this trash. What's the matter with that? Why, a guy, that looks like a gorilla painted that with his feet. <laughs> You're pretty close. My wife did it. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Put your ear up against the wall. Is the missus home? I always like no, to see the isn't. stars wide. No, she isn't here. I told her this would be fixed before she got home because she can't sleep at night with that thing dripping. And she, our bedroom's on the other side. Is it? Yes. It'll be darn. I'll let you see it if you're real good later. <laughs> you hear anything? Why, sure. It's water running through there. <laughs> Well, no. uh, nothing's wet, though. I can't understand where the water's well, going. Let me just tell uh, would you hold us for a second? Now, chances are it's in the bedroom. Is she in there by any chance? No, don't go in the bedroom. Well, let me go in there anyway. <laughs> Good. Honey! Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> she is in there. Yes. <laughs> Boy, she's a good-looking woman. <laughs> <laughs> don't, oh, don't tell her what you think of her painting. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. Now, no, what are you, now, go, what are you I, going to do? I'm going to tell you something. Let me listen to this again. You see, normally my assistant listens. He's an illiterate, but he's a wonderful guy. And uh, I give him 25 cents an hour. You can do that with an illiterate. Uh, let's see. Now, what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to make you a deal. Uh, I always like to do this with whether you was a star or whether you wasn't a star. Don't make no difference. I make deals with people. Uh, this this water is running through there. When I went in there, I seen her for a few seconds, then seen the water on the floor in there. It's ruined that beautiful carpet. There isn't any water on the floor in there. Well, I'm telling you, there is now. Oh, that's the dog. That hasn't anything, that hasn't anything to do with the, the leak in the wall. 
Now, well, well, do, you, do you want to go up on the roof? Now, here's, there's no reason for me to go on the roof. I'm scared of heights anyway. <laughs> What I want to tell well, you. Well, there's is, a tank on the roof. Sure, there's it's always. A it's, no, it's a holding tank. We collect rainwater. Well, let me let me just uh, let me present this deal. Why don't you go up on the roof? I will in a minute. I will okay. in a minute. Uh, I just want to present this deal to you. Now, what I'm going to have to do is, and please sit down on this one. Uh, what I'm going to have to do? Will is, you give me uh, an estimate? Yeah, well, that's what I'm going to do. All right. I'm going to knock this wall out. And oh, give you a number oh, six oh, pipe. Oh, Wait a minute. I'm oh. going to knock, uh, knock the wall out, give you a number six pipe, yeah. and my, my assistant is going to help me with put the pipe in for $1,500. Now, look, I'm not making anything on this. I'm not making, I'm not making a, a red cent on this. I'm doing it because you're good people. I enjoyed your wife, and I'm sorry about... Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry about dropping the... Uh, Dropping the tools on the, on the Spanish uh, tile and that cheap old painting. Just, a, just a minute. Why do you have to knock out a wall just to fix a leak? Well, I don't know. Any, let, let, wait a minute. I don't tell you how to be funny. I don't tell you how to be funny, and you sure as heck don't tell me how to do plumbing. I'm going to tell you what we have to do. There is no magic. There is no magic way for me to just put my hand in like this and play around with a pipe. Why don't I'm you just go in there with this? Just this make, is a trick, my just friend. Just make a little hole, and then you can patch it up. Would you, you stand over there or sit in your chair, smoke your little funny pipe, and, uh, and just let me... Let me you take... sure you're a plumber? Let me tell you something. How long have you been a plumber? You come in, you listen. Let me to wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now don't get bad with me. I was in World War II, and a guy got a guy got bad with me in World War II, and I killed him. I have no argument. Okay. Because these things, boy, this is violence here. That's, that's, that's this right. is violence. You go right ahead. Okay. <laughs> now what? I, that's water, all right. That thing is just, you know, it's just like Niagara Falls. That's what it is. Here, you take this picture here. Well, that'll give me an idea. <laughs> you, that's giving me a real good idea. Yeah, you see now. Now you can see here's the pipe. See? Yeah. See there's the pipe. Now, 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 now well, let's you don't it. have to destroy the whole wall. Well, can't no, you? but look, well, can't, can't you get... fit your hand in it? I can't. Can a fool put his hand in there? Are you kidding? Wait a minute. Take a smaller hammer. All right. Well, I'll try that. Let me see. Let me just try this first. Here, let, let me hold this for you. Okay. Here, here's the... Oh, no, no. Wait, wait. I'm... All right, no, all right. Well, well hold on. Well, there's that, your pipe right that, there. That, yeah. I want to tell you something. Boy, when you see a pipe, you recognize it right now, don't you? I know it's a pipe. I can see it's a pipe myself. Now then, you can feel right up there. You feel that leak coming down there? Yes, sir. Now, why don't you just fix it and don't tear any more out of the wall? Okay, I'm sorry. $1,500 to fix a leak. Twelve. <laughs> I don't want to negotiate with you. I just want you to fix the leak. Look at the mess you're making here. I'll get my assistant. Let me make a call here, because he's down at the bar. <laughs> I know where he is. He's down at... Uh, Tell his bar, just let me make a call here. Crying out loud. How do you work these things? These Look things just drive me crazy. If you don't have a well, dial here, system, why don't you take a hammer wait and a fix minute. it? Oh, wait a minute. Just to, what, what do I do here? What are these old things here? What number do you want to call? Let me dial for you. I can't do this. What's the number? Uh, 786. See that? See the stick with a little Please, top I don't... on it? That's the 7. Okay, 786. Seven, six. 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 No, no, 786. Oh, okay. Seven eight seven eight seven, six seven eight six five five seven five, seven, five, five seven two one. <laughs> seven eight six five, five seven, seven, seven two huh? one. Five seven eight six five seven, seven two one. What? It's the wrong number. We can learn a lot about the great figures of the past from history books, but we can't be sure that the historians are always accurate. However, with Jonathan's imagination recreating great characters from history, we may still doubt his accuracy, but who cares? We're in for a lot of fun as we take a peek at the past. Today our guest is the man who became the evil power behind the throne of Tsarist Russia, the mad monk, Rasputin. 
<laughs> Did I scare you, my little babushka? Indeed, yes. I am evil. Oh. You better know that. Yes. But I'm not always evil. Oh. Remember this, my dear, after the interview is over. I will take you to the Volga for a little dip. <laughs> <laughs> May I ask you, sir, why were you referred to as the Mad Monk? My name has always been to me Rasputin. But it's been disputed. That's not a corn joke. That's not a corn joke. It has been disputed. They have called me the Mad Monk. All of Russia called me the Mad Monk. I'm not always mad. I get along with people. They just labeled me mad crazy. But I'm not. A nice guy. For years, historians have been wondering how did you accomplish your evil influence on Russian nobility? Well, for the first 36 years, I was a woman. <laughs> After that, great guy. <laughs> now I, I don't know what I am. Look at me. Long hair, beard, frightening clothes, slick little outfit. I don't know what I am, but I'm having a ball. <laughs> ask you, what kind of a woman was Tsarina Alexandria? Groovy lady. Oh, boy. Figure that it was out of Roskaraya, Kurnanyanska, Vienokuzhanska, Rodinilevye, which means, mm -hmm. she was nice lady. I hope you won't mind my asking you this. But is it true that every high-born Russian lady was under your spell? Almost all of them. There was one who was not under my spell. Very difficult. Her name was Elgufka. She was something else. Big in the sleigh bells going all the time. That's what broke my spell. The bells were going all the time. I couldn't get her to stop the bells on the troika. She was bad news. Did not like her. By the way, sir, whatever happened to Anastasia? Anastasia. He got a bad haircut. <laughs> yes, I I'm not quite sure I remember him. He was he had a bad time. Yes. Let me test your memory, sir. I hope so. <laughs> what was life like at the Winter Palace in Petrograd? Boy, it was colder than a well digger's boots. <laughs> uh, I mean to tell you, <laughs> boy, you had to go like this all the time. <laughs> but it was cold. It was really cold. It's so cold, you know, there was very little to eat, too, you know. There were a little to eat, a little tiny biscuit, you know, or, or maybe, a, maybe a snow bunny, you know, a little snow bunny. They're little tiny bunnies, a little snow bunny. Yes, you bad people. If it isn't too painful for you, sir, yes. could you describe for us the night of your assassination? Well, you know, it was a night that I just wasn't right there. I mean, it wasn't a night for, for me. I was, I had a lot of vodka. Boy, I was feeling no pain. I was dancing along the, along the Volga, really going along like this. When a guy came up to me and he said, And he hit me with a knife about 28 times. I said, please, come on. What's with you already? He kept... <laughs> I said, I've had enough. I turned around, he shot me in the back. Boy, I tell you, it wasn't my night. Before the show, this is all impromptu, right, you know, because so. I'm not reading this now. Okay. We passed out these cards to the studio audience, and we asked everybody to write down an occupation, a situation, an ad lib, 
and sort of a routine for Johnny and possibly me. I hope so. I hope I'm in there. And uh, we're going to get going right now. You ready? Okay, sure. Okay. This is number one here. Jonathan is a cook for a gang of Western outlaws, and Bert is their leader. Hey, uh... You know, I wanted to ask you something, uh, Mr. Schellinger. I'm getting sick of you. Uh, well, uh, you know, I have always idolized the way you can kill people. Of course. Uh, it's only natural. Well, you know what? Yeah. I don't like the way you get on your horse and get off it. Well, when you cook the way I do, uh, you have a lot of problems. <laughs> and, uh, I would... Is it the stew that bothers you? I noticed... Uh, no, it's the after effects. <laughs> now, here's a good one. You're going to like this. All right. <laughs> Jonathan and Bert are shooting the rapids in a rubber boat. Oh. Oh, oh yeah, I remember that. You remember that. <laughs> I'm always in the back. Okay. All right. Okay. Whoa. Think we'll get that by? Hey, uh... No, no, not that way! Over there! Hey, we'll go for it. Uh, uh, couple old country guys up there on the bank. I wonder what they want. Hey, let's don't bother to ask them, huh? Okay. Oh. Hi, country guys. <laughs> Says here, uh, Jonathan and Bert are two captured spies facing the firing squad. Okay. Should we stand for this? Oh, sure. Well, I don't know. Why not? Why too many not? guys are set when they're being shot. I, I noticed your hands were tied in front. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's kind of weird. Hey, I only got one last request. I've got 25. <laughs> Mine has to live to be about 99. What's yours? Well, I'm going to have a cigarette, and then uh, I want to talk about my folks for a while, and uh, uh, I want to talk about the state uh, where I was born, the house and everything. I want to stay up here as long as I can. I got another one. Shoot right. him quick. Right. <laughs> well, that guy missed me. Miss chance now. <clears throat> huh? How can you miss a that big guy? guy? Hey, look at that guy. Did you see him? Look at him, look at him in the eyes like this. See? What was that? Missed my small little body. <laughs> this is the last one. Okay. You'll be relieved to know. All right. uh, Jonathan and Bert are two babies in a maternity ward. <laughs> in the wacky world of Jonathan Winters. Until we meet again, make the most of your wacky world.